Welcome to North America, everybody! Uh, Freedom, uh, Team Freedom, going up against Inting for Globes, the Heroes Hype Premier Series. Now, we looked at a lot of the games of the European scene in the past, but I actually uh, got a couple of the matches from the North American side, and I thought we would go over the pond today and have a look at those. And on the left side, in blue, on our first map in the Best of Three series here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, we have Cure on Blaze, Lutano on Kel'Thuzad, Zagrak on Dibble, Collusion on Anna and Hosty on Hanzo. Whereas over to the right side of the map, Inting for Globes with Winterheart on Johanna, Ezarel on Greymane, Valama on Oriel, Anaverted on Gul'dan, and Funbuns on Malthael. Time to shine, everybody. Now, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, first of all, we have obviously a lot of former HGC pros on the left side for the blue team, but this is going to be a pretty interesting series here, to say the least. I think this is actually one of the semi-finals already that we're taking a closer look at right now. And I love these team names. I mean, Team Freedom is already pretty special, but Inting for Globes describes pretty much every single quick match you probably ever played in, so that team name is just gold. It's something that I could have definitely seen in uh, one of the Division 7 matches as well. But again, we are at the Heroes uh, Hype Premier Series here, not Heroes Launch. And as it happens, when we're looking at those combos, we actually have a little bit of a... I don't want to call that more or less an old school style. I mean, it's an Oriel paired with a Gul'dan as the battery. You don't really see that all that often. Now, we have to, of course, point out that Oriel was changed in the last patch quite a bit. Ooh, Winterheart is in trouble. Ha! <laughs> and trouble means he's down. First kill right here, and maybe a second! Yes! Oriel doesn't die alone. There's a lot of solidarity on the side of the red team, and they die in pairs, apparently. But coming back to my point, Oriel has been changed a little bit, whereas previously she was heavily dependable on having another battery in the team that she could use to generate hope. Now the playstyle of the hero will have to be slightly adjusted by all of the Oriel players out there, because you have to be a little bit more active if you really want to generate the maximum amount of hope in these games. You need to do a little bit more damage against minions and heroes yourself, and the battery, while still important, is not quite as unique anymore as it was before. Nice stun here by Valamar, though, against Blaze for just a moment, but not enough to really get a kill here or anything. Lutano at the same time, still chilling around on Kel'Thuzad and hoping to get his quest completed here with the Master of the Cold Dark. Eight stacks for him so far. When talking about Gul'dan, by the way, as a battery, we have him with a different build here. So instead of going into the echoed, uh, uh, the echoed corruption here, we have him with a Pursuit of Flame on level 1. So a little bit of a different setup for him. We've seen this build before. It's not really that common in Europe, but it sees play. And, well, in the meantime, we're seeing this little mage battle as Lutano is pretty much trying to take out Gul'dan whenever he has a chance to do that. Also, Malthael. In this case, with the level 1 on the throwing shades, so already the question what we're going to see on level 10 for him. Last rites, or are we going to have the Tormented Souls instead? For the time being, the blue team heading into the series as the favorite has actually taken the lead here in terms of turned in gems. 24 so far, what they got rid of. And here's the interrupt against, or the potential against Zagrak and Collusion, but both of them turn in, and Malthael in bit of trouble. Hosty wants the kill and nearly gets the kill. Collusion coming in too, trying to help out here. The red team with Siege Giants at least at the bottom of the map, but they haven't turned in a single gem just yet. Not one gem handed in by Inting for Globes. Also, we don't have a single Globe talent for them. That's a bit unfortunate. I mean, if you already call yourself inting for globes and I want you to really draft heroes that can int for globes, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't int with this particular setup, but you at least want to get something out of it, right? So now we're having 10 stacks for Kel'Thuzad. Lutano is looking for more. And especially Kel'Thuzad can be a bit of a beast when you're pushing with Web Weavers, for example. And when you're trying to siege in, thanks to all the chains that he can sprout there. Now, obviously, we don't see as much Kel'Thuzad in Europe, to be absolutely frank. I don't, see if, I don't think we've seen him at all on this level of play. Sometimes in a bit of a meme game mainly, but he usually doesn't make an appearance there, since most of the mage players will instead go for heroes like Gul'dan, Li Ming, or others. 
In this case now, once again, Gul'dan in a little bit of trouble. Zogrog was already looking for another opportunity here, but Gul'dan still able to walk away. With 41 gems turned in against zero, there is a significant advantage now for the blue team, and they're obviously looking to complete the turn-in and get the first Web Weaver wave. We're having also level 7 now on both sides, but here's the blue Web Weavers. Energized court taken, and Web Weavers are coming in. Gul'dan! Oh, that stun is gonna hurt. Yep. Unaverted goes down, and that is gems lost, of course. On level 7, the chilling touch for Kalthuzad with 14 stacks. He is starting to become a bit more dangerous. Doesn't need only another 16 to complete his quest. Talking about stacks and completed quests, Gul'dan is halfway done with this one too. Nice attack against Johanna here. Yeah? Straight through the middle, needs to be careful once more. We're seeing Kel'Thuzad dishing out the damage. He has 16 stacks for him and a massive push through the middle of the map from Team Feed'em. So far, they haven't really been feeding a lot. Oh, Greymane! Oh, nearly a kill, but Ezreal is barely getting out. And that's a good thing for the red team. If Inting for Globes loses all of the gems that he holds, that would be a really big blow to them. Same also true for Von Vansi in the back, who's at least holding 10. With three kills against zero, we're having Team Freedom doing pretty well here. By the way, they just misspelled Freedom, didn't they? I mean, come on. Come on. It's North America after all. So with that, we're now having the hit straight against the fort here in the middle, and that one is going to fall. The thing is that one at the top is also about to go down. That's two forts down with the first Web Weaver wave. Like, are you kidding me? They're killing it here. Absolutely killing it. Now, Lutano is sitting at 18 stacks. We're having also the level 7, uh, the touch of death taken. That is going to help them a little bit. But in addition to that, when you just look over at experience, the lead has now been taken by the blue team. They have taken two forts down. They are crushing game number one. They're honestly crushing it. I mean, they're going full meme dream here. Zagrak is already sitting straight at the side here. And, well, let's have a quick look at the damage output. I mean, it's early in the game, but let's get a bit of an idea. Hanzo, 13,000 already. And we're having, uh, well, Gul'dan at this point at 14k. Actually, top numbers in the game for him. So, yeah, the Fell Flame build that he is rocking is so far working out for them. They still need to turn in a couple of gems, though. They haven't turned in a single one yet, but they're holding on to 64. And they should really start to drop a few of those. Three heroes is what they lost thus far, and that also relieved them of quite a few gems. Once again, the attack against Gul'dan, and he's nearly, he is getting wrecked. Goes down against Hanzo, and there's the level 10, and immediately the lightning breath. Hanzo's arrow comes out too, but Aurel was also outside of the range of the lightning breath. And again, they turn to Fun Buns, 19 gems in his hand. Nearly the one stun here against him, but they don't even need that. The Jet Propulsion and KTZ are doing what they can to finish the job here. 34 gems for Winterheart. Uh, Aegis saves him, <laughs> but not for long. Right now we have 39 gems for... Oh, Greymane! <laughs> does he actually survive? Yes, he does. And the counter kills against Blaze and Diablo at least came finally in. Gul'dan gets wrecked just as he drops the horror fire. But boy, do we have a circus in our hands. The fiesta has started, ladies and gentlemen. They're going for Hosty. He jumps away. Yeah, very much so alone. And dies now <laughs> too. Uh, yeah, you can't spell Clown Fiesta without an A, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in that last battle. Quite a bit of fun on both parts here. Seven kills against three as the dust settles, and now an opportunity to finally turn in their gems. But I gotta admit that still, Team Freedom is fairly ahead. They still have the structural advantage, they still have the better numbers when it comes to the gems. I mean, think about it. They have the first Web Weaver wave, they have already 42 additional gems turned in, and in comparison to that, their opponent is barely able to get a turn in. What an arrow! Unbelievable, but it might still turn against them. There's the kill against Greymane, though, and the quest is completed from Kel'Thuzad as he's trying to get some additional damage out. Lutano is already on the chase against Malthael, and he's about to drop him right here. Greymane down, Malthael down, and still no turn in for the red team. Unbelievable. Team Feed'em. They came in, they fed a couple of heroes to the opponent, and they got their worth back in gold as they get the kills shortly after. Nicely played by them. And a pretty fantastic move also by Diablo, who pretty much swapped a target into Hanzo's arrow. 
very well coordinated. I mean, again, the XHGC boys here are doing extremely well for themselves in game number one. They get level 13 just in time for the push as the Weep Weavers are going down again. Down to town and in the middle and towards the top straight for the keep. Spot lane is obviously going to fall if nobody moves over there. And it doesn't really seem like Indian for Globes is going to be able to hold on to that. So it's all about the mid lane right now. Greymane sitting topside, the only one defending this. Lutano coming in again with the damage, trying to drop it here. Another stun and Zakrak is a bit low, needs to be cautious too. I have zero idea why they weren't even a little bit more aggressive. Oh, there's the nice setup from Gul'dan, but he falls shortly after he drops that Horrify. Goes down against Kel'Thuzad. Lutano is just murdering them here. Oh, the top lane got defended, the one in the middle. Oh, the attack and the melting away of Johanna. Johanna gets melted down and, well, we have another attack against Oriel, who is actually still playing a fairly nice game here. But 11 kills against 3, and I'm not quite sure if they can get the keep here. I mean, it's the second Web Weaver wave, and we now have at the bottom of the map the last port falling in just a few seconds. But they were hoping for more, they were hoping for the middle here. And so far, they weren't able to get it. So, at this point, we're having still the move to, to the middle from the blue team, but they're already retreating here. Looking at the damage output though, 32,000 for Kel'Thuzad and not a single death to his name. Nicely done. I mean, Lutano is doing a great job and not only him, you're looking at Hanzo and he's sitting at 32,000 damage himself. Well, sorry, 29,000 himself. Whereas good old Gul'dan is starting to fall back a little bit. So, yeah, Fellflame build is continued here. Not a single stack, by the way, for the last ride, so that's still missing. But now with even more gems lost, Inting for Globes is looking at potentially turning in finally. As long as you hold gems, you have a ticket back into the game, but they already lost a lot of gems in this game, as you can imagine. I mean, they are looking at their first turn in still. They need another three gems, which doesn't really sound impossible. They haven't really been able to do a whole lot in these team fights, but now is the time. They are on the same talent level as their opponent. Kel'Thuzad is moving in. Everybody is currently set up in the middle for the next big fight. Hanzo still looking for his level 1 quest completion, by the way, on the side of the blue team. And inting for Globes. Well, they're gonna get their Globes right now. The question is, are they gonna get their gems? Here comes the spike, here comes the damage, and Lutano wants another kill and nearly gets it. But also, Blessed Shield thrown out right away for the save. Half level until 16. Horrify comes through. Lightning breath. And they're just melted away. Down they go. Lutano and Kel'Thuzad and Ana both dead. But Oriel and Gul'dan have fallen as well. And now they counter against Greyman. And he is dead just as Diablo crushes his skull into the wall and drops the wolf. Fun Buns attempting to get out of there. But Cure is already moving in from the side. Waiting for another jet propulsion. Turn in attempt by Wind. Hard here though, and he's gonna get this one. The problem is that his entire team is dying in the meantime, and that means that those web weavers are not gonna do anything. He's gonna move out, but all that he bought them was a little bit of time. Probably not a bad thing, but it comes at a high cost. Finally, they're getting s rid of some of the gems, but it also means that this is not going to look like they're going to get a lot of value out of this. The bottom of the map is already getting attacked here. The fence is on as we're seeing Hanzo up at the top already dealing with the web weavers far into the territory of the red team. And the similar situation here near the bottom. Q on the other hand, eating a little bit. Well, 20 gems and he's barely making it out of there. Anna, of course, trying the heals. In the meantime, Diablo is also on the run, but it seems like the blue team is gonna survive here. Yeah, the attack keeps coming, though, as we're having team inting for Globes, pushing them in slowly and steadily right there. Top side, a little bit of action. Oh, the horrify again. It's not enough. It's simply not enough, and Hanzo gets the arrow connected. Short distance, though. But Dibbles is already on the case, trying for a little bit of a body block. They're pushing once more Aureal back into the team fight. And here comes the attempt to get another kill. But the last rides, the second stack comes through. Wow, and Hanzo barely misses the kill against Aureal as the scatter shots don't connect the way that they intended to. 16 versus 17 now. And we're having Indy for Globe slowly fighting their way back into this. They are on the same talent again. They haven't lost their keep yet, which is actually crucial. And at the bot lane, we're seeing some damage against the first forward. Now it's a bit doubtful that it goes down here since the Web Weaver is already eliminated. But then again, it's losing a lot of hit points as the fight continues mid side and everybody seems to be low. Hosty looks for another kill with Hanzo, but can't quite get it. 
But there we have the final level 16 talents picked now too. All right, so Fell Flame builds going on with the Fell Armor and the Rampant Hellfire right now, plus an addition to the Soul Collector. The fight here in the middle again. Johanna has gone into fanaticism and needs a little bit more survivability since she was heavily abused throughout this entire game. I mean, three kills already against her. The only one who died more often is Gul'dan, in the fact. Uh, but they still can go for that fight. They don't have enough gems, the red team that is. The blue team on the other hand could get the third turn in if they play their cards right and sneak someone maybe towards the top. Right now we're having Hanzo taking over in the overall damage, but Gul'dan is starting to catch up here. He definitely does. Now he's all of a sudden in a position where he might be able to take over eventually. 15 kills against 6 and the game is not quite over yet, but the advantage goes definitely to Team Freedom. There's no doubt about that. Hosty 29, and he secures it. The fight, it has to happen right now, and they are looking for it. They're looking for that opportunity, but again, you see Lutano the entire time with KTZ just getting the damage out. Over to the left, getting that in as we speak, but now with the retreat of Inting for Globes, it seems a little bit less likely that they're able to hold the keeps this time. Granted, we're having Gul'dan already pushing out the top lane, and that's worth quite a bit, but it's not going to help them in the middle. And even at the top, I think eventually the keep is going to fall here. Ooh, there's actually a rotation even towards the top side now. They're starting to miss in straight away. Yeah, there we go. Here comes the attack as they're trying to go for the middle once again. Lutano with another attempt, gets the damage through against Ezrael. He's adding the damage numbers up, but he's not getting any kills just yet. Bunker comes out as well, and they use the CC again to control them. And here comes another attempt by Lutano to put the finishing job onto Malthale. Unsuccessful, I might add. Malthale by now still at two stacks for his level 10 quest. And it's once more the death of Gul'dan. Six times has he died now. Too close to the flame, my friend. And now with the death of Johanna, those web weavers are going to get mad value. Top lane gets defended, but in the mid lane, the keep is already down. And at the bottom of the map, it looks very much like we are going to see another main structure fall. Questionable if it doesn't even matter because we have an attack towards the core already. Level 20 abilities are also in the game. And with the death of Malthael, this is going to be the end of game number one. Azrael tries to get another kill, gets it against Anna, but that doesn't matter anymore. Two keeps down, the Web Weavers on the chase. Oriel trying to save herself for another second, but in comes Diablo, and all hope has been eliminated. That's game as Team Feedem gets the victory over Inting for Globes on the first map of this best of three series, taking Tomb of the Spider Queen against the Red Team. GG, and well played. Game two, everybody. Uh, we have our second game in the best of three series here. The teams switched sides for this one. We have on the left in blue, Inting for Globes. They're down one map in the best of three series now with Winterheart on. Tyrael this time with a nice old school combo, having Greyman in the setup so that he can benefit from uh, Tyrael's abilities, the movement speed, attack speed bonus, and also the sanctification. Unaverted playing the hero. As a real on Kalthas, Valama on White Main, and Fun Buns on Blaze. On the right side, Team Feedem trying to counter Greyman in particular with Zuckruck on Arthurs, the movement speed slow, Killusion on Rhaegar, we have Lutano on Hammer, Cure on Illidan, and we're seeing Hosty playing Medivh, which pretty much means that Arthurs is the main tank for them. Highly interesting, not something that you see a lot in Europe. Normally, Arthas is more so the side laner that you will see in some compositions. And especially with the rise of Grey Main, it's obviously now way more interesting for teams to also draft Arthas since, well, you can counter Grey Main to a certain extent with Arthas. It's not like a rock, paper, scissor thing, but it definitely helps you in big team fights if you can lock him down and also slow the attack speed of Grey Main slightly. This setup at the top, on the other hand, is so far absolutely unanswered. I mean, right now the idea seems to be to just out-push the hammer composition with Greymane at the bottom of the map. But there's a 3 versus 2 setup that we're seeing here, and Blaze seems to be all alone at the top as he's trying to get some value against the 3 man that he's going up against. As one tower goes down at the bottom of the map, the entire wall has been destroyed top side. And this is getting a little bit insane here for them, so they need to be a bit careful. I mean, the blue team is under pressure here for sure. 
And yeah, the Illidan composition might at some points be a little bit gimmicky. It's also weird to have ours. It's in the main tank position from the European view. But still, there is a decent setup. Also, we have on the other side Kalthas. And Kalthas is not really here that you see too much on Cursed Hollow. Then again, you don't see that much Cursed Hollow in the first place. Kalthas in Europe more so here that if you see him at all, is going to be played on Tomb of the Spider Queen and or on uh, Infernal Shrines. But right now, they're going to try and get the value and also the CC in against all those remaining heroes. But it's always a little bit of a nuisance going up against the hammer, and that's shown at the top lane here. But I gotta admit that Greymane is fantastic against structures. I mean, we talk about this all the time, and he is going to get that fort. They're going to get Zagrak too. <laughs> I mean, they're not going to stop at the fort. Zagrak goes down, and that fort is going to be attacked any second. Now, granted, the top lane is a little bit quicker, and they're looking for the counter kill against Fun Buns, but they are not getting it. And here comes the remaining push and ho 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 Killusion! Ah, barely made it out of there, that was a close call for him. Fort at the bot side is finally falling, so the red team is definitely a little bit quicker than the blue team when it comes to these pushes, but at the end of the day, they still have the same amount of forts taken down and couldn't really push it farther forward towards the keep, which is obviously going to expose them also quite a bit. Interesting setup here, by the way, for Arthas. He went into the Icy Talons on level 4. So not going for the traditional Frozen Tempest talent. And that also means that we could, on level 7, actually see him with, well, Rune Tap over the Icebound Fortitude. Rune Tap gets a little bit more value if you go into that specific level 4 talent. So we'll see if he actually makes that choice because he's still up against the Grey Man. That could go into a Cursed Bullet and, of course, Kalthas too. Talking Kalthas, he deviated away into the Energy Royal. Nothing that you usually see in Europe either on the highest level of play, but that's what different regions have always shown. Slightly different talent builds, slightly different hero um, preferences. And that's where a lot of the... Uh, well, the, a lot of the action came from when we looked at international tournaments, for example. Now, those are obviously a thing of the past, since HGC has been killed off by Blizzard. But still, it was always a lot of fun to see the different regions clash and show off their meta. 11 stacks by now for Medivh as well. And up at the top, the zone out from Team Feedem is continuing as they're attempting to get the first tribute in the game. Having more action in the middle of the map as Greymane gets attacked and the wall gets attacked too. Greymane, by the way, might be in a bit more trouble than he asked for. But Q has to retreat as well. And with this setup, they're just murdering this particular wall. And the tribute has also been claimed by Team Feedem. They are on a roll here. I mean, they are on the warpath at this point. They are going in and starting to take that down slowly and steadily. I mean, it's getting a little bit crazy. Q, on the other hand, dove in a bit deep, but he has Medivh to support him, so that definitely helps. Uh, but now with level 7, 4 Kalthas and the bombs, we're having the burn flash and the kill. Kill number 1 and number 2 go over to Inting for Globes. They take two kills against the red team and have now set themselves into a pretty decent position, despite the fact that they took so much damage in the middle of the map. Having Kalthas already going for a siege camp all the way up at the top. Greymane is sitting mid-side, whereas Illidan has moved to the bottom of the map. And as expected, there's Runetap! Yep, Icy Talon straight into Rune Tap for him. Now the Hover Siege Mode for Sergeant Hammer. We have the Cleanse for Rhaegar. And when it comes to uh, the Talons, we are obviously having one of Greymane's favorite. We are seeing them here with the Swift Retribution. Fantastic for him. Now camp has been taken. At the bottom of the map, Q is sitting tight. Five minutes in, the bosses spawn. So five minutes into the game, boss camp spawn. And that means that the teams have now a chance to go for those two as an additional tactical objective on the map. A slight lead in experience already for the blue team. So Indic for Globes is actually looking good on that part. An earlier level 10 with maybe an additional kill would do well for him. Uh, but Illidan is still bot side. Everybody else is rotating towards the top and trying to get this particular tribute. Obviously if you are playing for Indic for Globes, the idea is to prevent them having two and forcing you into the fight over the third so that you're not going to get cursed. But as it stands, we're having Illidan still at the bottom of the map and with a five-man set up top, anything for Globes, they have to hurry this a little bit. Because Team Feedem have all the time in the world. The only thing they need to do is delay this and they're going to get value through Illidan at the bottom of the map. But the fight is already starting up. Hosty, Hosty on 26 stacks. He can't die. Oh, and he gets away with 125 hit points. If they would have been able to take Hosty down as he has 26 stacks on his baseline, that would have been pretty incredible. Yeah, but the turn-in or the uh, the cap has still not happened. 
Hosty has pushed it through again. The fight is there. Here comes already a cleanse out. Inverted is getting attacked, but tries to turn around against Arthur. Sultano is moving in from the side. Blaze by now is taking bot lane against Illidan. Arthur's low, and Arthur's down. They go for Collusion, and they're gonna get another kill here, aren't they? Oh, the bird is a little bit low. Hosty, hosty. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he loses everything. He loses all his stacks. Uh, they at least get the tribute, but damn, son. And Illidan comes in with the hunt. Hunts in right away. Cure wants the kills. They get at least white main. But that fight was, generally speaking, oh my god, if he can get the kill here, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that fight was, generally speaking, a little bit of a disaster for them. Four kills against one. They got at least the tribute, and now the third one is spawning. But damn, this was quite troublesome, especially for Hosty. Losing the stacks on Mediv just as he was about to get the quest completed is incredible. It's great, of course, for ending for Globes. Fantastic for them. But that definitely hurts. So now we have level 10 on both sides. And still the leading experience, but just the smallest of margins for inting for Globes. They're trying to, of course, win this one now. They have to, because as we already analyzed a little bit earlier, it's the third tribute. And he has the interrupt attempt. Now Blaze is making his way into the quest. Yeah, well, there we have Illidan actually with a hunt again, so he could also hunt in. He does exactly that. Hunts in, gets cleansed, and they go for cure. Can they get the kill there? He jumps out, and Kel'Thas again with the damage as Lutano is shelling the shit out of the backline here from the angle. In comes Kel'Thas trying to lock him down for a second. Does exactly that. Gets some decent damage in, but it's not enough. The rest of the team is jumping in too, trying to get the kill. Oh, and the bombs are spreading. They're spreading heavily as he moves through. Fantastic ley line, but it's not enough to get kills or anything, but at least it covers the retreat of the team as Team Feedem decides that it's time to give up the Tribute. Yeah, Tribute gets taken, Illidan is back on his duty in the middle, but they get another lockdown against Arthur, who so gets attacked once again. QS jumping in, he wants a little bit more of the action. Ult already thrown out from White Mane. They're trying to turn it here. Bunker on the ground, Cure in trouble, and Cure might fall here, but the jet propulsion misses, and now they have to retreat, but there's the chase as we have the immediate portal on the ground. Nice portal control from Kel'Thas as they're trying to retreat towards the fountain. Illidan protected, and also the ancestral healing. But the fight isn't over just yet. Endless fight here in the second game. And they're jumping onto Zakrak again. But he gets saved by Medivh, who's sitting another 12 stacks by now. The fort is down. They're trying to go for Lutano, though. And there's the kill against Hammer. Hammer time is over. Hosty is also in trouble. He has 20 stacks right now. And if he falls, he's going to lose all of them again. And he should definitely die here. Yep. He goes down again and loses all of his stacks. Now, Blaze has been forced towards the top lane since Catapults are already pushing against the keep. And that's not the only thing. Illidan in the mid lane is doing the exact same thing. Feedem is keeping the pressure up throughout the entire game. Despite the fact that they are losing hero after hero. It is six kills against one thus far. And Illidan gets caught a little bit. But the hunt! Oh! And the follow! Great main jumps in! Goes full Superman on Illidan! And says, I got this, boys! Illidan thinks he's the only one he can hunt! Fuck that shit, I can hunt too! Goes after him and takes him down. Cure feeling probably more than just a little bit troll. Now Arthas is also in trouble, especially since the boss has said, Hey, I'm gonna take a liking to that boy. Yeah, boss wants to get himself a bit of a prince too. But now we have the channel and it's two tributes for two, two tributes right here. Nicely done. Jump towards the top. And well, with that, we have a little bit of action happening as both of the teams are now on level 13. And seven kills against one tell you the tale of how the team fights are going so far. But there we go. We have 32 kills on Hammer. Also 32,000 damage. 36,000 damage from Greymane. Not even Arthas could stop him. Nice ult from Hammer, but it's just not really effective. That's the problem with the BFG. You kind of want to drop it in a moment when he really has an effect in the team fight and not just simply to poke in some damage. And that's the only thing that Lutano just did. So in an ideal world, you're always waiting a little bit longer until you get something done with that. Winterhearted jumping out. There's a fight over here. Tribute is, by the way, spawning. That's going to be a curse tribute too. That is going to be a curse tribute. And that means that both of the teams should really make a play for this one. Illidan, of course, with the hunt, is playing the global strategy again and is trying to push in the bottom lane. 
Kalthas is dealing with the middle right now, and I guess eventually he will have to move to the top. This is not really a good move for the blue team. Actually, wow. Balls to the wall, boys. I mean, they are going in and they are putting uh, the cojones on the table right here. They're going for the boss too. I mean, mamma mia, this isn't bad at all. They are really going all out. Now we're having the sanctification already dropped as they're trying to chase. Yeah, uh, then is sitting in the mid side. Is obviously going to try and hunt in eventually, but we're having him up against Kalthas still. Bot lane has been defended so far, but this is still a third tribute. This is still a pretty important one, since whoever loses it is going to be cursed. Quest is so far also completed on the side of Kalthas. He's sitting at 27. Arthas is completing his own quest just now. And there we have the action. Illidan is still sitting mid-side. is on cooldown, so he's currently not able to hunt into the fight. And that means that the blue team takes it. Blue team takes it, wants to go for the fight here. BFG comes out again. Can they get the kill? Yes, they can. Uh oh, or can they? Leyline might have just saved them. They're jumping in again. Arthur's gets saved by Medivh once more, but, well, not for long. He goes down too. Illidan was trying to push the lanes, but with the curse now onto them, he won't be able to get that in any time longer. There's the action straight into the keep or the fort in the mid lane. The one at the top lane is also getting attacked, as you can already see. The minion wave is going to take that down eventually. But they're taking structure after structure right now. Cure has been playing a great game on Illidan, though. I mean, he's been really playing that macro card the entire game, pushing out the lanes and forcing, in particular, Kel'Thas back to deal with the minion waves. Now they're attacking here once again. Top lane, as I said, is about to fall. But as they are moving through the middle of the... or the bottom of the map, they're trying to go for the keep, too. We have now 15 stacks for Medivh, who's still waiting to complete the baseline. And things are not looking pretty for Hosty. But after the victory on the first map for Team Feed, him, inting for Globes is definitely smelling some blood in the water. They have to take some weakness on the opponent's team, and they're trying to go for it, and they will get the keep. They took two forts down and the keep during the curse, and they have now a significant... Well, maybe not all that significant lead in experience, but they have a significant lead in structures. But Cure is still trying to play a little bit of Red Dota here as he goes straight through the middle and is just trying to play around the opponent's team. And Team Feedem is attempting to buy him as much time as they can, preventing potential Hearthstones. And just look at it! Cure just doesn't stop, he's sitting there again! 16 talents already now on both sides and Cure just hunts away. Yep, Jet Propulsion doesn't connect with him either, but he gets locked down for a little bit longer just as Medivh is saving his ass. So now we're having also level 16. I mean, look at that. Ignite has been taken together with a Pyromaniac. Okay. And there's the boss fight. Oh, that might be a little bit too much to ask for. Not with the Sanctification, baby. They jump onto the boss. The Ley Line, not good enough. The Sanct on the ground and the Phoenix. And they're going to steal this away, aren't they? They have White Main too. Down goes Arthurs. And, well, they are lucky if they don't lose more here. Honestly, that boss was incredibly greedy, and now it's been taken. And one of the reasons why they went for the boss in the first place is obviously that they were trying to remove it as an option from the board, because now we're having the big push to the bottom for the core, but they're trying to push in the middle. It's a race, boys. It is a race. They're going for the race here. Fun Buns is trying to prevent the worst here together with Illidan. All right, the two of them, as we have the boss, not even at the bot lane. The boss is going to be pretty late to this party. The shields are falling on both sides, but now that Hammer is down, that's a problem. He's not the only one that's falling. Kalthas is doing a fantastic job here, and they are dying one after another. Rhaegar down, Hammer down, and on the right side of the map, the boss has finally arrived at the core two. They're going to win this one. Easy peasy. No victory over to the left side, and this is it. Game number three incoming as Inting for Globes takes Cursed Hollow against Team Feeder. Game number three, the final map in the best of three series here at the Heroes Hype Tournament in North America. Winterheart on the left side for Inting for Globes on Johanna. We have Valaman Whitemane, Ezreal on Hanzo, Unaverted on Sergeant Hammer, and Fun Buns on Blaze. And over to the right side of the map, Q on Leoric, Zagrag on ETC, Hosty on Uther, Killusion 
on Oriel and Lutano on Vala. So they're pretty much putting all of their eggs into the Lutano basket and they're just saying like, okay, Vala, let's go, baby. And this is an insane setup if you're actually trying to play a hyper carry because Lutano is going to get protection from two supports and from ETC. And in addition to that, there's obviously now also a chance for a divine shield on the mosh pit, AKA the holy cow. So we'll see how that's gonna work out for them. Cure already with a proper skin, the janitor. He's gonna try and clean house here. As we're gonna see the Swiffer straight to the face of Fun Buns. And yeah, Leoric is gonna try, try and take out the trash during this game. Lutano in the meantime, going apparently into a multi-shot hybrid here. Going straight into the hot pursuit. That's at least the indication so far. And the rotation is in. Now, I gotta admit that ever since we finished with Division S North America, I haven't really seen too many NA games, so this is gonna be interesting from my perspective since I wanna see what the rotations here are on the map in particular. In Europe, once that the objectives spawn, aka, well, not only the objectives, once that the items spawn, you have an immediate rotation towards the camps and then the attempt to take them as quickly as possible. And the same happens here too, but we have an innovate. There is actually an invade from Team Feedem. Like, they are going full in on this one. Yeah, you can only YOLO once, baby. Unaverted already with Hammer in the back lane here. He's trying to do his thing. Zagorak has to already move out. They're trying to go for the kill against Fun Buns. And what a stun by Killusion. Baby. Yeah, Killusion knows how to handle a whip. At this point, they're going for Hanzo, and that's the second victim here. They take the item, they take two kills. Nicely done. Yeah, but that Killusion guy, I mean, he knows how to handle a whip. And if you see someone playing Oriel that well, you know there are some real-life applications to that too. I mean, there's only two things. Either he's a secret Indiana Jones, or that man is pretty kinky in the bedroom. It's one of the two. Here comes the attack against Johanna, and she's down too. I mean, damn, the boys are on fire right now. Nice isolation and body block that we saw. And they are opening the game up with a bang. Not only are they going to get their kills in, they're also stealing the items away. This is kind of kind of getting crazy here. Another hit by Collusion and connects it straight to that. I mean, yeah, that is... I mean, uh, sorry, but like, that's I'm mistaken here. If that was supposed to be secret, then my apologies. But there's definitely a little bit of a preference in the bedroom going on here on the North American side, for sure. Then again, Q is still cleaning house at the bottom of the map. So, yeah, trying to take out the trash now. And the next team fighters are going to start moving into this. And we're looking at the setup. Vala has by now gone into the multi-shot build, as expected. We're seeing the silver touch into the Holy Shock and a special, pretty much. They've been playing a lot of main tank Uther in the past, but this is a full-fledged double support, and so far it's working out. They're getting the damage in. Lutano is currently killing it. Literally and figuratively. He's doing solid work here. Still the attempt to go for the healing beacon. They have a massive lead. I mean, guys, they're on level 6. They're one and a half levels ahead. <laughs> that means that if level 7 is going to become a thing for them, they have a massive lead with the talent over their opponent for a pretty long time in this one. They gave up the healing beacon, though, so that's at least something. At the same time, now we're also having position taken on the first one. Without level 7, Unaverted is obviously in a spot where he can't really do too much because he doesn't have the hover siege mode. But level 7 is going to drop into the hands of Team Feedem in only half a level. Yeah, whatever they've been feeding them this morning apparently is working out right now. It was slightly delayed in game number 2, but at this point it's looking good. Unaverted is sitting at the bot lane, homing in his auto attack skills. But Lutano just dashing around here. And again, healed by Collusion. That's obviously also the main battery for Aurel right now. And there's the level 7! And now it's time to shine. The clans comes in. Uh, the hand of protection. In addition to that, we're now also having the arsenal ready. So even more damage from Bala as they're starting to move through. Here comes the sofa. Leoric immediately trying to get another kill in. And another whip into the wall. I mean, seriously. Indiana Jones called. He wants his skills back. Like, what's happening here? Look at Killusion. Like, that boy is whipping that thing. He's whipping up some serious numbers here. So now we have the protector claim. And they're starting to move straight through the middle with that. The wall is already open, so you can go straight for the fort here, which is exactly what they're doing. <laughs> and the damage is getting dropped. Yeah, Leo is in the meantime sitting bot lane. 
three kills against zero and here's the rotation towards the top as team feedem is trying to get into the grand final of this tournament and they're making the same rotation that you see in europe they're a little bit aggressive about it too they want to go for the fountain of course to secure themselves a very good position for objective number uh, three and uh, number two actually yeah, well, at this point, keeping uh, the entire stacks up on the hatred for Vala. Uh, she's a pretty hateful girl. But then again, haters gonna hate. And, well, if you have that ass, you can definitely afford that. So, yeah, at this point, they have taken uh, down half of the HP of the four top side. Ooh, but Fun Buns is trying to go in with a stun, but gets stunned out and whipped away. Honestly, they're really crushing it. Right now, Team Feedem is putting up so much pressure, it is kinda crazy. I mean, they are doing really well. Three kills against zero, invading the opponent's item camp, stealing that away, taking an easy objective, preparing the top lane, even looking for the destruction of the fort now. Could go for level 10 with that too. They're looking really good here. Unaverted with a legendary hammer flank coming in right now. Not quite sure how that's gonna pan out for him. Q is actually missing uh, the bucket at this point. But in this case, they are still trying to rotate around, especially since Blaze has moved towards the bottom of the map. Cure is more or less forced to meet that rotation and help out there. Uh, another quick move against Winterhearted, dropping already the heal. Cure comes in. Guys, they're nearly on level 10. If they hit level 10 in that fight through the minion wave, I mean, that would be lights out. That in tomb would drop a second later. You know that already. And they are doing extremely well here. I mean, again, they're killing everything. They take the fort down. They have full control at this point. Level 10 is going to allow them to more or less drop the fort in the mid lane too if they want to. So they're starting to move in for it. And there's the level 10 abilities. Uh, st no strafe. I'm actually surprised that we don't see strafe in this setup. I mean, Reign of Vengeance is fantastic, but most of the time when you see Reign of Vengeance being picked, it's really because there's someone on the opponent's side that has the mobility to really threaten Vala. In this case, because the stun is important to you too. But in this case, we're actually looking at a lineup that doesn't have that, and in addition to it, you are rocking a double support, so I could have totally seen Strafe here for Lutano, but he plays it safe, and he wants the additional CC to stack it with the rest of the team. We have a chance for the Holy Cow on the other hand, since we see the Divine Shield and the Mosh Pit. Level 10 ability is now on both sides, which gives us Napalm for Sergeant Hammer. And therefore, a little bit more AoE too. After the three kills initially, Team Feedem has applied pressure, but they haven't got additional kills yet. There's also the bunker now. Vala still dropping the numbers in. And with all the support that she's currently getting from Aurel and from Uther, that's obviously great. Quest already completed here. Vala comes in. Vala wants Hanzo. And Vala nearly gets Hanzo. Oh, the dodge. The heal. Lutano is still alive. They dropped everything on him. He dodged the arrow damage, by the way, and then the heal came through. Now we're seeing the counter move, and it's party time, baby! As ETC asks for the dance, and they take down Johanna with it. Great play here. The save on Vala, absolutely spectacular. Even dodging out on the damage from Hansel's arrow, that will take them down too by the holy cow. Yeah, the action continues, and Vala's just on the move, dodging everything she can. Massive damage right here, 44,000 damage already from our girl, from the little cowgirl, and the objective spawning now topside, where Cure is again taking the lane down. Nicely done. Yeah, with that said, I mean, currently we're having a fantastic lineup, four kills against zero, good job nearly level 13 for them now as well but obviously ending for globes is still eager to force a bit of a fight there it's not as much of an item control game as we've seen in previous matches i mean in europe by now pretty much every single rotation ends up with the mercenary camp that you're trying to go for the interesting part is that we have team freedom active at the bot lane as they are apparently trying to get level 13 which is actually not a bad move so they are pushing for the fort. This prepares for objective number three, obviously, already. And in addition to that, they're going to get level 13 now. Can still make the rotation towards the top in time. And that should allow them to fight for the objective with a level 13 talent advantage. Unless they're just saying, boys, let's go keep. Which, in theory, is something they could do too. Leo is still at the top, proxying a couple of the waves. Yep, and there's now the B back as we have an attack towards the wall. And if they should win objective number three, that would obviously open up an opportunity to even go for the core. 
Yeah, top lane has now still been taken by the blue team. Are they actually trying to fight this? They are giving up the protector. Team Freedom is looking at this and they're saying like, D guys, we don't even need that shit. Like, we are, we are fine here. We don't need that shit at all. So they are still fighting through the bottom of the map at this point. Ah, uh, Bliss Shield is so far still ready, so it could be thrown out if there is an opportunity. But they are starting to push this. Leo is still sitting topside. Protector is there. Time is already counting down as they're trying to go for that. Arrow is missing. And, well, nearly a kill against Sergeant Hammer, but the bot lane is still continuing. Yeah, there's ETC plus Vala, and they're going for Johanna, and they take her down. Down she goes. And that's the solid kill for them. They still hold on to two items and they're pushing that keep as we speak. Protectors in the meantime moving through the map but obviously gets burned down too. There's another approach. Party time and a kill. ETC letting them dance. Yeah, let them dance, baby. Back in the Baywatch times, you wanted to let them run. Here in Heroes of the Storm, you want to let them dance. 15 against 13 any second, 6 kills against 0, and I've never seen a Protector trying to run back to defend a keep. Like, that's a new one for me. The Protector is like, yep, maybe I can do something here, but sorry dude, you might be strong, but you're also pretty slow, and that keep is down. Pretty decent trade. Pretty decent trade, actually. I mean, yes, you give up a Protector, you lose a fort, but you get a keep. Uh, let's, let's be honest, you get a fort and a keep as a counterpart. Not gonna see anybody complain about that. Well, now we're having also a half level away from 16. The red team in a... I mean, they are just looking fantastic here. Just look at the damage output again. 56,000 by Vala. Butano is just running around like a bunny on speed. The entire giant just hopping around, getting the damage in, and doing as much as he can here. It's honestly pretty amazing. And with level 16 talents, and now starting to go for the point. Here comes the Entomb, and it's in a fantastic Entomb. Cure with perfect play. The bunker to counter it. But still, the action is there. There's the slide, and there's the kill, as White Mane is kissing her life once again goodbye. They're trying to get another kill. Winterheart and Fun Buns are actually both isolated. Tries to escape here with the Jet Propulsion, but there should be another slow any moment. And yeah, there could be the end of Johanna. Hammer helping out a little bit, and the whip into the wall. Killusion, 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 all game long. He is whipping up some serious kill opportunities for his team. Eight kills against zero by now. Vala has gone into the frost shot on level 16. The Benediction is helping out too. And the Reservoir of Hope. I would have loved to see a bit of an auto attack focus here from Aurel with the build as well, but so far we're not getting that. But they are just... Absolutely murdering game number three. Another entomb, and it lands again. Another whip, and another slide, and another kill. Well, maybe yes. There. In the meantime, Leoric is also moving out. Like he is just ghosting through all of this. Three level advantage, and Team Feedem has just massively stepped up the game in uh, comparison to the last one. It honestly feels like game number two was just where they were trolling around a little bit which might well be the case. And then in game number three, they just said, okay, guys, I got a hot day today, so let's make sure that we finish this quickly. And that's exactly what they're attempting to do. 13 minutes in, and they're already knocking on to keep number two. Yeah, and they're stealing camps away even more. I mean, Lutano, again, you have a double support plus ETC behind you, but you still need a good damage dealer that is able to do his job, and Lutano is definitely, definitely checking that box right now. He is murdering it. And those entombs from Cure are sexy as hell. One entomb after another. Still the save on White Mane, but he is putting so much pressure on them. Cooldown is ready. Cure finds an entomb. That's pretty much what's going on here. Unaverted on Hammers, trying to do as much as he can. And Cure is feeding. And so is ETC. The front line is actually starting to feed a little bit. Is that the start of the comeback? 10 kills against 2, Lutano wants another one, gets healed, gets the Divine Shield. Unaverted is still going for the Hammer Flank here as we've seen previously, and Hanzo is down, and so is White Mane. Double kill from Lutano! And Q is obviously going to be back in just a moment. They just don't know when to stop, do they? They just don't know when to stop here. Another attack, and that's another kill. 13 against 2, the kill count here, and they're going for the keep as well. Keep number 2 eliminated, and they are just absolutely crushing this game. It's amazing, it's honestly amazing. I mean, right now we're having a perfect setup. 
with 92,000 damage on Vala already. Hammer can't keep up with that at all. Kilusion moves in again. Here comes the next attack. The core is already falling. So is the bunker. They're going for the kill against Hammer and Blaze. And well, do they get unadverted? Ooh, nearly. Yeah, but they're gonna get the core if this continues, don't they? The double support is just absolutely murdering it. And here comes another attack from Lutano as he tries to get the kill against Hanzo. One shot shy of dropping him again. But there's another attempt to save that core somehow. But guess who's back, baby? It's the cow. ETC is back to business. Slides in and nearly gets the kill against Hammer single-handedly. But they're waiting for the rest of the team too. And they sustain themselves through all of this. Double support makes it happen. Once again, Leoric falls. That's the third kill for the blue team. But they're down to 55% on the core now. Hanzo again barely jumping out. Another whip into the wall. And the kill against White Man as Lutano shows no mercy. Mercy here goes in again and starts to drop the mad damage. The slide on Hanzo drops him too. That's 15 kills now for the red team. They drop Blaze and that's level 20. We're even seeing the Rancor now chosen from Lutano. He's going for it. He gets another kill. They get another two and they get game as well. 114,000 damage for Vala at the end of it. And this is it. A 2-1 victory for Team Feedem against Inting for Globes.